right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Will Hare, who is over in Raleigh, North Carolina. How are you doing, Will? Doing great, John. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Will is the CEO and founder of Bellavix. Uh, increase your online footprint and boost your sales through domestic and international marketplaces. But what we're going to talk about today is penetrating and growing your e-commerce business on Amazon. Um, okay, well, let's let's get straight into it. Um, I mean, Amazon is a, Amazon is huge now. There's so many different uh, people leveraging that as a platform for business. How do you how do you even where do you even start to compete? Oh man. So what's different about, so let's just start with some quick Amazon facts just so we yeah. can get it on there. So we get an idea of how big this beast is because unfortunately it isn't a necessary evil. 60% uh, of searches start on Amazon and about 50% of e-commerce sales in the United States happen on Amazon. And it's continuing to grow. The, the pandemic has done nothing but strengthen Amazon's presence. They've opened new logistics centers. And what's really interesting, as of you know, a few months ago, there's officially an Amazon uh, airport within 100 miles of every major U.S. city. So Amazon has taken the, uh, you know, the winnings or what they've been able to earn um, you know, pre-COVID and really invested into the infrastructure. We've seen the, the degradation. So just to give you guys some scope of how mm -hmm. big Amazon is and what the beast is and why, why it's a necessary evil. So, you know, how do you get on Amazon? How do you penetrate? How do you make a difference? Uh, first of all, Amazon has, has changed from years ago. Gone are the days where you could just find a really niche product, sell it online, something that's pretty much brand agnostic. Where the tables have turned, it's all about brand building. So people are going to Amazon to check reviews and they're going to kind of gauge your product as well as spec out some competitor products. What's nice about Amazon is people shop on Amazon are closest to the bottom of the funnel. So what should you be doing to penetrate the market? Building your audiences, building brands. So the, the first thing we'd recommend and when we call out is make sure you have a good website's presence, that you have brand collateral and that it's consistent through all your marketplaces. That in itself will, will help out and, and help grow the brand. Outside of that, it's, it's you know having a good customer service experience through Amazon, advertising, uh, marketing, running promotions, and just getting your product in front of customers that are searching for those types of products and, and interested in making a purchase. So I'm obviously super simplifying it, uh, mm -hmm. but basically, you know, the biggest difference is Amazon's a play for brands now. And if you're, you know, if you're not building a brand or you're looking for retail arbitrage, that's there, that exists, not something we specialize in, but um, where we see companies that succeed tend to be brands who are, are really working on building that, that presence. Yeah, because I mean, obviously, we've seen a change over the last while is where, you know, brands, even well known brands like set up a kind of shop on Amazon. So if you're if you're buying something from even from a well known brand. But the other thing I think will that's um, that really confuses everything is it's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of white labeling of the same product with different, you know, with different brand names and stuff. So that kind of gets confusing for people too. Absolutely. And I think that's the, that's the challenge with anything. So, I mean, it comes down to your, the products in your catalog, you know, to, to give you perspective, we're really working with mid size to larger businesses. So most of the brands that come on to work with us, they have a website, they're doing sufficient sales and they're trying to crack the nut of how do we scale on Amazon? How do we capture more in market shoppers as they're, you know, doing their research, it's just part of the customer journey, which is why uh, I'd mentioned that it's a necessary evil private labelers, uh, somebody who's, you know, selling, uh, you know, garlic presses, for example, um, that's a little more challenging. Those are products that are brand agnostic. So then we're operating on just different KPIs. It's about how much can you get it? What price point can you come in at? And do you have the collateral that's going to make a sale? And, you know, the different price points really gauge it. So if you were somebody looking for ideas and trying to figure out how to penetrate the market, just some quick rules of thumb, 30%, give or take, is going to be what you could expect to spend on fees. We find it very difficult to market products that are below $15 because generally it doesn't leave enough margins to advertise. And when you penetrate Amazon, you're, you're likely competing against hundreds of sellers that are selling very similar products. So it's important that you do your research, you pick a good product, you have a good price point. You look at negative reviews on existing products that are very similar. 
and you look at the Q&A section on those products, this will give you an idea of what are some frustrations customers are feeling in the, the product, how you can innovate that existing product to make the better widget, um, and then also how you can showcase those differentiating factors in your listing, through images, through title, and all that other fun stuff. If you build a, a really great product and you market it and people find it useful, it'll collect reviews, it'll get sales velocity, and then before you know it, you'll be one of the top garlic press uh, sellers in all of Amazon. Yeah, that's that's my that's my next career. I've decided. I'm yeah, garlic, garlic press. press. Garlic Will press. You sign me up. I'll buy your first one. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, I, I guess I guess the other thing, Will, just as you referred to there, it, it's interesting is there's so much there's so much information available to you about the competitors or other people in the market there because obviously of reviews and people posting pictures and all of this kind of stuff. So to your point, I mean, really kind of doing your ho the homework that you just outlined there is figuring out, you know, how competitive your product is, what's going wrong with the other providers and all of that. I mean, it, it's all there if you do the homework. Yeah. Preach. Amen to that. No disagreement yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, I, I guess the thing is, uh, as well, is when, when somebody decides, you know, that they want to you know, have their business or scale their business on Amazon, what other challenges do they face? I mean, obviously, uh, what you just talked about there is like, you know, establishing the brand and all of that. But what other things do they need to have in place? Because it's not as simple as just going online. You have to have some logistics or some infrastructure behind you. Absolutely. And especially this year with some of the supply chain issues, we're expecting our, our partners to be dealing with. So uh, real quick, I'll just call out. So brand registry. So if you're going to be on Amazon, you need to have brand registry. Brand registry is your ability to file your trademark with Amazon. And it gives you additional advertising features and features, enhanced features on your listing that'll help with conversion rates and move more product. So first of all, if you're going to jump onto Amazon, have something that's trademarkable. The IP Accelerator program is a great program. In four to six weeks, you could have the brand registry rights and be on your way to getting a principal trademark on your logo or your, you know, the, 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 the name of your business. Um, that's a major factor. Outside of that, you know, diving into logistics, this is going to be the conversation for, I think, most of e-commerce. What we're instructing all of our brands to do that have the abilities is just to get as much product in the United States as possible. Uh, and take advantage of third-party logistic companies. Um, all of our partners officially have a, a third, a 3PL uh, solution that they're working with, and it's just, it's needed. So what's going to happen, like anything, Amazon shifted the way they do inventory management. So it went from a ASIN or SKU level system where you can only have so much of a, a specific SKU mm -hmm. in stack, um, or you can really have unlimited, to now it's account level. So you can only take up so much cubic feet based on sales velocity. And Amazon doesn't want to be in the warehouse business, which is why they, they moved this. But this isn't the first time they went to account level. So it could change back. But because of those limitations, you can't just send in stuff. Amazon's you know, system in which they grade that's kind of squirrely on you know, what actually affects it and, and how it fluctuates. And the worst thing, the absolute worst thing could happen is running out of inventory and not having a backup plan in place. It affects your bestseller ranking, your BSR, it affects your organic ranking, and it takes you know almost twice as much time to earn that back, even if you're out for just a week. It's just a big process. Once you take a hit, you take a hit. So the, the solution is to have that 3PL fulfilled by merchant, that FBM. So when you're FBA prime fulfilled by Amazon, listings go out of stock, which is inevitable. Hopefully everybody's mm -hmm. killing a Q4 and that's everybody's problem. It's important to have that FBA, FBM listing available because you can continue to sell product. You can prop up that listing to make sure you maintain your BSR. You could keep the advertising going. So that's something that remains consistent and continues to drive growth and revenue. So these are all things to keep in mind. And if you're looking for a great partner, you know, we have people we recommend. We're actually a partner with where to go They're a UPS company. They're somebody we recommended to all the uh, our partnerships that we work with. Yeah, there's a couple of things there that I just wanted to touch upon. Yeah, obviously, uh, inventory and supply chain is is an issue right now. And uh, the other thing I think what happened during the pandemic and what I think really affected a lot of people's attitude is there was a lot of companies selling products and sort of taking your money and then sort of going, oh, it's stuck in China. So you'll have to wait three months. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah. And a lot of people were burned by that. So I think the, you know, that idea of of being 
being more transparent and being more trustworthy. I think that's a big issue now. I agree. And I think actually Amazon supersedes that pretty well. So we know when things are in route, they'll show up on Amazon with an expected delivery day. And it could be 30 days out, but at least you know before you add the cart, hit the button. And with regards to the FBM, IPI scores, your inventory, I forgot what the acronym stands for, but your IPI is how well you're fulfilling these orders and the quality of your inventory. And if you're fulfilling merchant and you're not, you know, it's taking 20 days, 30 days, 60 days, and it's not properly set, uh, your account gets dinged and then you lose a lot of traffic. So uh, compared to other solutions, I found that at least through our partnerships, Amazon has had less of these issues, but it's still frustrating because we're all used to two day shipping and I hate waiting three days or longer for anything I need. I know it's so, we've, we've become so spoiled, haven't we? I mean, I'm Seriously? kind of like, nah, I mean, sometimes I'm like, oh, I can't get it next day. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you start doing your searches by when, you know, next day avail- uh, delivery. Um, and, well, and actually, I'm thing- really glad you brought that up, Sh- searching. So that's how searchers shop. So they're going to they're mm-hmm. gonna go to your website and they're going to say, hey, it's, avail- it's going to take 10 days to get here. Guarantee they're going to go on Amazon. And if it's a couple of dollars extra, which would violate the pricing policy, I doubt it is, they're going to buy it on there if it's two-day shipping. So to your point, I shop the same way and it's just consumer insight. If it's mm-hmm. prime, it's first. If it's a hard item to get, I'll wait, but I'm going to be very frustrated and pacing until it shows up. Yeah. One of the other things that you you touched upon earlier, I just wanted to come back to again, is is the customer service and the experience. And obviously, like some of that is handled through Amazon. But I mean, I've seen experiences where you get wonderful follow up from a company when something's happening. And another one where you get these bizarre emails eventually, <laughs> like in broken, you know, with bad grammar and all of that in it. And then you start to wonder, is this a real company? Yeah. That is, so customer service and brand protection is, is something we offer and it's it's paramount, like it's the difference. So, you know, you're describing exactly what a lot of customers feel, especially if they're buying from a wholesaler who's like Joe Schmo's widget seller, garlic presser, you know, they, they don't know the quality they're gonna get. So just to call out one of the things we do, and I think anybody who's listening can actually apply this is, we work with an agency. What we do is we write that. We first scan through all the questions and we get an idea of what are the typical responses. And to be honest with you, late shipments, when's my package going to get here, showed up damage, like having all of these asked like what to do's and, and list it out when, you know, we automatically do a return. We, we do this automatically, we send out a new one, having that laid out. And then as new things come up, add it to the list, get approval. But because you have this template, it becomes a lot easier to follow up. And another thing we set up is called a post-purchase email sequence, which is done through Amazon. Uh, And it's our ability to have these really customized, personalized emails that come out. Uh, We usually do two. So it's like uh, your order is on this way or when the order gets there, uh, really glad you got your order. If you have any questions about your order, let us know so we can, you know, help you out essentially. Uh, And then the follow-up to that is if you had a great user experience, you know, we'd love to get your feedback. And we're, we're obviously fishing for a review without directly saying that to stay within Amazon's terms of service. You're allowed to ask for a review. You're not allowed to ask for a positive review. So those are the two ways. Then the third way we do it, I'll throw out a, a, a hack we do here at uh, Bell of X. Um, for consumable items, uh, we will, uh, t- you have 28 days to follow up. So what we find is if it's something that's consumed generally within 30 days, is we take that last email and we touch them at day 28. You have to stay relevant to the product they purchased. So we check in one more time. How did you enjoy the product? Do you have any feedback for us? We'd love to get a response. Then under that, we'll reference three other products that are new to market or just something we're trying to push. And it gives us an opportunity to build that lifetime value and increase um, you know, uh, the, the likelihood of getting a purchase through the platform. And that's all done on, on Amazon. Yeah. And, and because I, I mean, what you're outlining there is, I mean, we're as, as consumers, we're, we're kind of funny people like number one, you know, we'll go looking for the best deal and everything, but also we want the customer service and all of that. So eventually we do want to, we do want to attach ourselves to brands that we trust. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're all looking for. I mean, then they like what, what makes a purchase is like you somewhat identify with the lifestyle images or that need of that brand. I'm, I'm a, a tech guy. I'm a sucker for anything that's Bluetooth that will take my TVs and speaker them all over the house. So, uh, so we all have our things. And if, uh, and if it's a good brand, you're going to stick by it, especially if you love, you know, that type of hobby or whatever you're doing. 
Um, without naming the companies, obviously, can you just give us a couple of success stories that you've had with uh, with companies uh, and getting their getting their uh, their Amazon really cranking? Excellent. Yeah, actually, I actually have two great stories. Um, uh, we actually helped one guy get into retirement. And we had another guy quit his full time job. So uh, really great experiences. So uh, in the one situation, we had a, a, a sports uh, apparel company. Uh, who was doing good. They were doing six figures a month. So like they had some revenue and they had a budget to afford an agency. Uh, and one of the things we noted, so they were weak on advertising, pay-per-click advertising. And what we find with a lot of uh, the closer you are to the money, the less reckless and not reckless, but the less mm -hmm. risk you'll take, you're risk adverse. But there's certain things that need to be considered when you're advertising. You know, you need to bid, you need to get data. The more data, the more effective we can be in advertising, and this person did good scaling the show. A, they had a really innovative product. They had great reviews. They work with influencers, lots of lifestyle. So they had all the different pieces, but they just couldn't get past that 100K a month. Um, so what we did is we implemented an advertising strategy. We did the full funnel. So we implemented programmatic advertising through DSP and then the typical pay-per-click sponsored product ad. Long story short, we widened our funnel. We created a prospecting to funnel that, that top of, uh, of intent and then work our way down. Um, obviously investing heavily more towards the bottom and the in-market segments. Uh, and long story short, after just a few months, we were able to scale this company from just $100,000 a month to half a million dollars a month. Wow. Uh, and now we're killing it. We've expanded into Canada and the UK. We're working on Amazon Live and a lot of other things. And a similar story with a supplement company um, this was a family owned business and they were just, um, they're just really, uh, nepotism. They, you know, they just weren't doing the right things and they were being a little easier on family members managing the account. Uh, in this particular instance, these family members have graduated onto other things. So they were looking for somebody to come in <clears throat> mm -hmm. similar. They were doing, they were doing under six figures, but, uh, in a short period of time, we were able to implement the right advertising strategy. A big thing with them was the parent-child relationships of the catalog. So organizing the catalog in the most effective way, optimizing the catalog for search and improving ranking, and all that helped. And we were able to take out of their catalog of 15, we found two products that turned into cash cow products. And it seems like half a million is the, the number, but we ended up helping them get to a half a million dollars. Actually, last month we did $600,000, so we beat our half a million a month. And we're off season, like they're supplements. We're not even in January mm. yet. So this guy is like scrambling on how, how am I going to keep up with this demand? And these are great problems I love to give my clients because if you have too much sales, I'm doing my job well. And the last story, I just want to talk to a, a larger business. So yep. uh, during Prime Day, we took on one of the, uh, a, a large national retail company and they brought us on three weeks before Prime Day. Um, and it was last minute and they just lost faith in the agency that they were working for. And we were able to come in, do an audit, talk about the strategy and work with the reps. And what we did essentially is, um, we created that full, you'll hear a lot of it, full funnel. Like what's the key yeah. to advertising mm -hmm. it's relevancy and making sure you're prospecting and retargeting. So we built that up and we built it more functionally than what they had it in the past. And we coupled that with an advertising marketing and promotion strategy. And we did this in four weeks, three other agencies said, no way, we won't take it. Uh, Prime Day, this happened to be a big company. We spent $2 million in advertising. We generated $30 million in sales. Yeah. Uh, we crushed it. We were the number two of this specific category. I don't want to give away the names uh, in all of Amazon. And we're still seeing great sales to this day. So these are just examples of you know, how operations affected, how advertising, how marketing, how all these different components are baked into the Amazon ecosystem and why it's important to be aware of that. But what's even more important is the brand experience, the omni-channel experience, making sure it's mm -hmm. consistent. These, what these brands do really well is that they're consistent in each touch point with that customer. And our job is to make sure that the Amazon and the marketplace portion of that is consistent with their brand, with their website, social media, and anywhere that they have a presence. Yeah, those are, those are great examples. Uh, thank you for that, Will. And, and I think it also underlines, just like anything else, I mean, if you are not careful, you know, because obviously Amazon has changed over the years and, and sponsored and ads and all of that are far more prevalent than they used to be, uh, that you could end up wasting a lot of money very fast on advertising if you don't have a good strategy behind it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the biggest thing. And, in, and some of it's just inexperienced. You know, we, I've been doing Amazon for a long time. Uh, every single day, my team too, uh, we're, we're in it all the time. So we're up, 
we get these, they change all the time. And it's Q4, so they've already changed some stuff. They're adding in new features on the advertising every year. You know, September, October, November, they roll out a ton of new features. They change the way the systems work. They get stricter on different things. And then like legislation, like um, I know that uh, Amazon had issues with, um, uh, they're now responsible for what happens to people who purchase products on the platform because of that. We noticed mm -hmm. an increase in certificates of analysis need to be submitted in specific categories, or it's harder to get category approval for specific products. So all of these nuanced changes that don't sound like much, they can seriously affect businesses and bottom line. And that's why it's important to just keep on top of everything. And Amazon typically, you know, for most of our retailers, you know, wholesale distribution tends to be number one. Website and Amazon tend to be on par for number two. So generally it's pretty competitive with some of the more mainstream um, e-commerce uh, areas to make money. Yeah, that was just fantastic. Uh, and great insights, great information. Will, all of Will's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, Will, please do tell people a little bit more about you and Bellavix. Excellent. Thanks. Appreciate it. So uh, uh, I'm Will here, I'm the CEO of Bellavix. And uh, Bellavix is a, a marketplace uh, management company. We help uh, specifically retail brands um, grow, establish their presence and grow on Amazon. Some of the biggest challenges our typical partners deal with is map policy, contributorship on uh, their Amazon platform, and really the ability to scale. And our team happens to have the experience and we're able to kind of lean in to get, to get that done. Me personally, I've uh, been in the advertising space for over 10 years at this point um, and have worked with lots of different businesses of lots of different sizes. Um, you know, cumulatively, the team has over 20 years of experience. So We've been really fortunate, especially since COVID being positioned uh, as an Amazon marketplace. And we've been lucky. We just renamed uh, 2021 uh, top Amazon SEO companies by the SEO blog.com. We got uh, top, uh, top 50 B2B agencies from Clutch. So we're, we're being recognized for these things and it's really rewarding. And you know what we're doing different is we're boutique, we're high touch. And we really love what we do, passionate about e-commerce and, and helping brands make a difference. Yeah, listen, and, and the, the, the passion, the commitment totally comes through. Uh, I'm, I'm a big believer. I mean, nowadays, everything is getting so complicated and so specific and specialized in the skill sets. And I'm a big believer now, go find people with the experience because um, even what you've just outlined in this video, I mean, it's it probably mind boggling to some people, all the different <laughs> moving parts of it. So I would absolutely uh, encourage people to check out Bellavix and then check out Will. All right, listen, Will, thank you very much. Thank you for watching and listening. And I'll see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.